Okay. Hey everyone. I guess you can see us. You can see Jacob's here. He's got to go do his. He's got to go do his work now. So get out of here. Get out of here, you weirdo. Okay, go, go, find me. All right. So I'm gonna try to do the first sample problem of the melting situation, and I'm gonna rip his head off later. Anyway, um, okay. So let's take a look at the scenario. This is the one sample problem in your classwork that it talks about dropping ice into water. Now we dropped metals into water, but there was no phase change. The metal heated up the water, the metal's temperature came down, okay? And that was because the temperature of the metal was hot, temperature dropped, so its Q value or heat value was negative. All right, stop. <laughs> um, and then the water's temperature went up, so its Q value was positive heat value is positive, but the sum of all that heat energy always adds up to zero. Okay, so let's take a look at this scenario here. We got 55 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius, all right? And so that's its T1, that's the original temperature of the ice here. And we're gonna drop that into water, hopefully in a styrofoam cup. And the water's at 60 degrees Celsius. So the T1 for the water is 60 degrees Celsius, okay? So what's going to happen is, it, the question says we need to know how what the mass of the water is in the cup. All right, so let's take a look. It says the temperature of the mixture becomes 38 degrees Celsius after all the ice melts. So what that means, the T2 for both things becomes 38 degrees Celsius in the end. All right, but here's the problem. When you drop this ice into, into the water, the ice is at zero, the water's at 60, well, the ice is going to melt and it's going to become cold water, right? And at the end, the temperature of all the water will be 38 degrees Celsius. Okay, so here's what happens. Since the ice is at zero, the ice temperature doesn't need to come up. Remember, ice can exist at zero degrees Celsius and below Water can exist between zero and 100 degrees Celsius. Again, we're talking about under regular atmospheric conditions. So what's gonna happen is this ice doesn't need to come up in temperature, it just needs to melt. All right, so there's gonna be a heat value for that. Let's call that, let's call that Q melt, okay? So we're gonna have Q melt. That's gonna be the ice melting, all right? And when that ice melts, the temperature of the water in the cup's gonna come down a little bit. All right, now what you have is cold water at zero, which used to be ice, and we have water at somewhere in between 60 and 38. I just don't know where yet. All right, so when the ice melts, it becomes cold water. Why don't we call that uh, Q cold? Okay, and eh, you know, we'll call it Q cold water. Sorry, I'm having a hard time writing on this thing. All right, and let's call the water in the cup We'll call it hot water, all right? Because it was at 60 degrees Celsius. Q hot water. Okay. So all of the heat was being provided by the water that's in this cup, right? Okay. So this water's warm. I drop the ice in. The temperature of that water comes down a little. Now the ice, which used to be ice, is now cold water. The temperature of that cold water is going to come up and the temperature of the warm water is going to come down. And they're going to meet at this temperature here, which is 38 degrees Celsius. But what I'm trying to show you is all of the heat in this entire system is being provided by that hot water. So the overall heat transfer of everything here has to add up to zero. Okay. So what happens when ice melts? When ice melts, the temperature doesn't change. So whenever the ice is melting, it's just gonna be the mass times that delta H of fusion, which is that 333 number, right? Okay, so we just did, we got the mass of the ice and the delta H of fusion is the 333 number, so we can figure that out. Okay, let's go to the cold water though. When 55 grams of ice at zero melts, it becomes 55 grams of water at zero, all right? And that water is gonna go from zero to 38 degrees Celsius. 
Now, I know I'm not dealing with a bunch of geniuses here, but I'm pretty sure that 38 minus zero is zero, uh, 38. Okay, so 38 degrees Celsius. All right, so, but since the temperature's changing and it becomes water, now it's not mass times delta H effusion. It's gonna be mass times temperature change times CP, okay? All right, so when ice melts, it becomes cold water. And the mass of that cold water is going to be 55. It's going to go up to 38, which is going to be a delta T of 38. And then we're going to have a CP of 4.184 since it's um, water. All right, and the hot water, all right, I don't know the mass of the water, but the hot water started at 60, and it's going to drop down to 38, which is going to be a negative temperature change and the CP is still going to be 4.184. Okay, so let's plug in everything that we know. We know the mass of the ice, and we know the delta H of fusion. You might not know it off the top of your head, but you know, you can look it up in your packet, that it's 333 joules per gram. So let's plug that in real quick. All right, so I know I got 55 grams, and it takes 333 joules to melt one gram. So I kind of have this situation here. Never mind the paper towels in the background. Okay, so what'll happen is the grams will cancel each other out. Okay, now let's look at the, when the ice melts, when 55 grams of ice at zero melts, it becomes 55 grams of water at zero, and the temperature at the end becomes 38. So that's a delta T of 38, and then we plug in the water CP. Okay, so the mass was 55 grams. The temperature change, 38 minus zero, is a change of 38, and the CP is 4.184. And that's joules per gram Kelvin or joules per gram degree Celsius. I'm using degree Celsius uh, because we gave Celsius in the problem. All right, so we got grams, grams, Celsius, Celsius are going to cancel. That'll end up being some amount of joules. All right, but the hot water, we didn't know the mass of it. Well, we don't know. Well, we just call it X. In this case, I'll just call it M for mass, okay? But the hot water started at 60 and ended at 38. So we're going to do T2 minus T1, right? 38 minus 60 is going to be a delta T of negative 22 Celsius. All right, so let's plug that in. So we don't know the mass. But the temperature is going to go down negative 22 Celsius. And the CP of water, it doesn't matter what phase, I'm sorry, what, what temperature it's at. It's always going to be 4.184, okay? And this is also joules per gram degree Celsius, but I couldn't fit it in. So I'm going to, uh, it's going to end up being joules per gram over there. All right, so let's see. We got 55 times 333. So this is going to give us 18,315 joules there, okay? Then for the cold water, uh, 55 times 38 times 4.184 is 8,744.6 joules, okay? This is really hard to write, obviously, when I'm using my... Elmo projector, and I can look at everybody. It's a lot neater. Okay. Then we got negative 22 times 4.184 times this M here, and uh, that gives us negative 92.05. By the way, the Celsius here would cancel the Celsius here, and this would end up being joules per gram times M equals zero. Okay. All right. Well, we can combine the joules here, and then we can add this over to the other side, right? So when we combine these joules and add 92.05 joules per gram M on that side, it's going to make the equation look a little prettier, right? So we're going to end up with, let's say I did it earlier, 27,059. 
92.6 joules equals positive now 92.05 joules per gram times M. Okay, so there's my combination step down there at the bottom. All right, and then the last thing is we just need to divide by 92.05 joules per gram on both sides, and that will cancel out the joules, right? We'll totally get rid of everything. So it'll look like this. All right, so the only thing left on the right side is M. We have joules here and joules here. That will go away. We're going to end up with grams. And when you divide these two, you should find out that there were approximately 294 grams of water in that cup. Okay? So what I'm going to do later is I'm going to post this video and then I'm going to do another meet session probably on Thursday and uh, we'll go over this and we'll maybe even do a problem together, okay? Um, hope to see you guys again soon. See ya.